guys this is Dorothy with done by Dorothy and we are here today um, we're working on our touch of nature journal that we have um, so I'm gonna work some more today in here so let's get started we're gonna work with this um, I did want to sort of decorate this tab here and with the orange here I actually had um, It off. I actually had a little piece of orange scrap that was left over with my from my um, when I did my boho tag uh, tutorial. So I thought I would just sort of trim it up a little bit and use it on there. That would be sort of cute. And maybe. A swing of this down the middle because the orange would show on the side that would be really cute and then let's take a little bit of this peach I think and we'll just fold that over and make that the tab so this is the peach I'm talking about and I, I think it would just be um, I'll actually fold it over a little so it's not as wide I mean I don't want to completely cover the tag so that'll fold over that way Underneath, it'll be the base, and then this will just fold over here, fold the orange over, and we can trim the orange up here in a second um, from the back. And then I'm just gonna hit again, make this really simple. I'm gonna hit this with my Tim Holtz stapler here. Lock it in so it's make sure I don't have anything else folded up underneath there. Click. And again, when I do something that's really thick like that, I will staple from the back as well. There we go. So, if that tab and that goes really good right there, and it's just sort of an orangey, naturey, I am going to come in. Stereotypical manufacturing and cut that at an angle. And um, with this being a pocket back here, I think we're just going to cut this at an angle too. So let's look through our things and see if we have something we can decorate this pocket with. So let's see what we got. I know we had some stuff that was um, sort of had that maybe orangey, peachy tone. Um, let's see. Oh, that's more of a pink. So let's see. And I mean, we may have something we can. Okay, I actually think we're gonna trim this down and use this postcard part right here. Um, obviously, I don't want to use this wool tuck in the pocket. So let me grab my paper trimmer. And I hope everyone's enjoying this series. Um, I love doing nature stuff. Just okay. So we'll cut that off. We can save that. Oops. I'm so sorry that that was so noisy. I was actually cutting this up and trimming this. Um, it's the last of that orange ribbon that we have down there, and I thought if I could trim it up and even it up. work so with this let's go ahead and deal with this I'm gonna actually put some tea dyed paper to the back of it and just to sort of thicken it up make it sort of blocky um, once I have have it done um, we get it glued on then we'll do the corners around the corners just to give it a little bit more look of a hole and then we can use the orange ribbon as a topper and it'll be a really cute and then we'll ink around that edges once we get it cut and it'll be a great little tag that'll fit right in there it'll go here plus it'll sort of blend with the orange here so it worked perfectly so oops 
know why I'm so clingy and dropping stuff like crazy. It's almost like my fingers forgot how to work today. It's not cold, so I know it's not that. No idea. Turn that little bit of excess off there. Okay. And we do have this I'm going to trim up. But I'm actually going to come in here with my pinking shears around the corner because I already had that pinking shear design at the top. And I'm going to hit it with the pinking shears all the way around the sides. So it sort of has like a, almost like a postage stamp sort of vibe, even though it's a postcard. I think it would be sort of cute. There we go. So about like that. So we know we have that there. So we'll see what else we can build with that in a minute. Let's finish this. Um, this is a little crooked right here. And you may have to, you know, every once in a while square something up. I am going to go ahead and um, put my tag in. And I know I want to put it, I think I want to put it like, well, it's not really going to, I wanted my hummingbird to show, but I guess we could just partially stick it in there. Um, I mean, I could sort of trim it down and actually use the hummingbird there. And then maybe the postcard thing at the top. postcard thing down and use it as a pocket Woohoo! on the back over here um, maybe tuck on the bottom if you sort of do like that so let me let's switch it around guys here we go I'm gonna trim this down just to create a small little tuck on the bottom of here and that'll go really good with the orange of the so when we ink that up, that'll stand out pretty good. And then Okay, let me grab a little card, you guys, really fast and grab my quarter rounder, my chomper thing. I bought a chomper, you guys. No, I had a quarter rounder before, but I, I couldn't do it with my hands. So I actually got a, a corner chomper. Um, oh, we are memory keepers. Oh no, a crocodile corner chomper. Um, because I got it, it was 40% off at Michael's. So it was $25.99, 40% off. And then turned around and um, got an additional 25% off of anything that was on sale or you use a coupon or anything for so I actually ended up saving 65% they let me do it at my store um, so uh, you know I saved uh, $18 and $18, $19 and 25 cents or something like that I don't know I ended up paying I think $7.99 for it $7 for it or so um, instead of the 25 so it was quite a save so let me grab it and then we'll um, let me go ahead. I can punch our hole in the top. I know I want to put it in this corner over here. Um, right about, let's go right about there. So, I know we can do that. So, we can put our hole reinforcers in. And I could have done that with my handheld handheld one, but that is okay. Oh, my bottle of water's there. I'm sorry. It's in your way. I'm trying to find. Here it is. So I am going to cut a small piece of this ribbon to go along with the orange. Cut them about the same size. About the same size. And I'll, we'll, use my fabric back. And I'm 
gonna run a streak of fabric tag down the middle of this ribbon because I sort of want to create like that layered look for my ribbon. Put this down the center of my orange so that orange on both sides. Get this at a sharper angle. Oops, maybe all the way to the corner. Okay. And this one will fit it the same. There we go. And then if this orange is really wide to go so make sure we get both of them up through there and the other orange it doesn't want to come through and we'll put that one up through there and we'll put that one down through there through there right up through there sorry I was working down there because it was hard for me to get them through there once in a while you gotta okay so let's get this pull this up I didn't make this pretty short so hopefully they'll sometimes you just gotta work with these and to get them to go they don't wanna sort of want to do their own thing. You gotta wiggle and move them and push them and pull them and by the time you get them done they're all crazy. Let's see using that fabric tack on there what little I did was just enough to hold that ribbon um, together and I'm gonna go in and cut all the little strings off the edge of that orange that's sticking out really bad. There we go. There we go. Okay, let me get my corner chomper to round it off and I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, and this is my crocodile corner chomper. So um, there's half an inch or quarter inch. I'm actually going to use um, I don't think I'm going to use the half inch. And see that's a lot easier for me to do than my other one was so hard to do and it would just I would push and push and push and couldn't get through anything get this one all crooked because that ribbon I guess I should have done that before I put it in there it's my own fault let's see let me try to put that this way maybe I can cut both sides that way There we go. Okay, then let me grab my sponge here. Oh, nope, there it is. And the walnut stain. I switched out my sponges earlier and was using my black one for the boho swap. And then I'm just going to ink up here on the edges of the front and back. And again, I probably should have done that before I put the ribbon on there, but hey, somebody pick the ribbon up and look underneath there, and we'll be fine. I love this. Oh, I don't have. And then I think gonna do is um let's see. 
some soil for walls. I actually think I'm gonna use this on this envelope. Yep, yep. And then we'll use what's around the corners of this. I think it looks I always think especially if you're like on a square base, that it looks better with the rounded corners. One thing nice about this corner chompers is it keeps all of the little corner pieces inside till you empty it, so it makes it nice. Again, I don't have to ink to the back, to the back of this because I'm going to glue it down. Yeah. And as you can tell, user error. Let me get something new. Okay, so let's see. Do we want to do a double pocket on the front? Mm, yeah. Because you can never have enough pockets. Even if we don't put something in it, you know, at least it's there if you need to use it. Always space to tuck stuff, so. earthy vibe to it. Sort of a back to the basics type nature-y feel. Okay, so there's that. We do have our one little card that will just slide down there like that. There. And then I think that'll look nice. Let me grab my trimmer. Um, straighten this up. It seems a little crooked to me. So I'm going to just straighten up the sides around on it and get rid of this blue on the edge. Because I don't want the blue on the edge. There we go. Um, and let's back this with an index page card. Uh, yeah. And then I won't round the corners to this one because the other one's rounded and that'll just sort of add a little bit more geometrical difference between them. Um, A lot of times I would use coffee dyed paper on the back. I'm actually using index on this to sort of, I want it to have a little bit more bulk um, to it. Okay, Let me get around the edges here. It has that vintage feel to it. And one great thing about having digitals is I can print as many as I need. So, which, you know, I really like having that option that, you know, if I want, sometimes you make something and it's really nice and a signature, um, like when you buy cardstock and you're using like, you know, cardstock out of a pad or whatever, um, and you use it and you're like, oh man, I don't have any more. And digital allows you that. Um, let's do this just in case I get this like this. And I think we're just going to fold it over. Um, you know what? Let's grab another little piece of this. There we go. Since it sort of matches that. And then we'll just our little piece over in the corner. Okay. 
And again, we'll use our tiny attacher. And you can glue this if you want. Um, you know, that obviously is a, you know, up to the individual. And I will, I don't want that towards, there we go. And that way we keep all the ribbons and stuff out of the, I'll come right up through there so we can see our lovely little hummingbird. Okay. There we go. I mean, technically, our hummingbird would fit in there. I wanted it in there, but I like it in the backpack better. Um, sort of to the side. And... Yeah, like that. So that completes that page. Yay. Another page down. Okay, then let's turn this over. Where do we do with our, where's our little postcard thing? Link this up really, really well on the edges. And I'm actually thinking, now that I'm setting here, give me a second. I'm up in my, hopefully I'm not blocking the light too much for you guys. Let me grab a paper clip. I'm just going to use this on the back. Let me just ink up the back real fast because it's not going to take a lot to there we go. I think this may get done. I guess we don't need to ink because it's already okay. So I'm just going to trim this up. Okay. A regular you know what let's I'm gonna actually use a plastic coated which I don't usually use but I have ones that are these really pretty orange colors that'll go right along with all of the orange let me okay let me find this one sort of bent try to find one that's not all the way bent okay there we go So let's change this up. Um, let's see. Let me find a whole card and use it. I like the cards because they're a little bit thicker. I think they adhere a little bit better. Um, okay. We're just going to do this this way. Let's put the short side there. Okay, so I put my, I took my index card, and I'm doing it this way, just because that's the way that it is, and put the long side of my pen, of my paper clip on that side, and then I'm just going to glue this, ink this up really good. Oops. And I want to make sure I have a really, 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 really nice coat of glue on there so it adheres and then I'm going to just line this up across the top just a bit I'm not going to worry about all of that and then I'm just going to take my pinking shears and trim along the bottom making sure I don't try to cut through the paper clip which I think is what I just tried to do Yep. Let me try to go this way. It'll show through just a bit, but we're going to hang some lace off there, so that'll be fine. Okay. Let's go 
that over there. Then let me re-ink these edges up again. Okay, then I want to use, let me put this up and grab my Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to go across right along the space at the very bottom of here. And then what I'm going to do to keep this unfolded is I'm going to put that lace right across the bottom. Which it's not really going to do a whole lot. It's just pretty much there just, you know, as an added. Should have an added benefit. Let me have to go my phone shares, actually. Okay. Then... I have this little piece of orange left over, which was like the last little piece of orange that I had. So I'm going to put it down here at the corner. I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. Just a little scrap that I had. Okay, then I'm going to grab a button really fast out of my button thing and I'll be back. I'll grab my, not my grandmother's, I'll grab my other button things and so you guys can sort of see it. Um, and I'll be right back with the, that button and then we'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do with this little paper clip. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and here's my little tote. These are the buttons that my mom and dad got for me. So there's a little... A smooth big top peanut butter tin. How when's the last time you seen one of those, huh? Let's see. Ooh. That would look really nice. Um, but actually we may use that for something else, but I don't want to use that on there because the orange on orange. So let's see what other colors. Um I really don't have any other colors on there, so maybe just a small brown one. Mm. Ooh, maybe this wooden brown one. Sort of a bigger one. Mm, let's see. There's just a ton of buttons in here, all different colors. Um, what about that one? Mm, it's deep looking. There'll be one that'll be like, oh, that looks perfect. That's the way it always works. Oh, there's a little copper one. And there's just all kinds of buttons and little odds and ends. There's little pins. There's a little... Some of the sparkly diamonds. Um, I think I like that one. Yep. And it's almost like a leather. But yeah, so yeah, there's all of those. But some of them are still on button cards. Um, yeah, there's fabric buttons, and I kept them all. I didn't get rid of any of them. There's some that are shaped like flowers. I mean, look at that one. How cool is that? And there's buckles and actually there's a brown and a green one that would be really cute. But it's way too bulky to put inside. Okay. So there's other buttons. I thought about bagging some of those up and selling them um, if people needed vintage buttons, but they, just, they bought them at an auction for me and Buttons are not cheap anymore because there's so many people, I don't know if, um, because there was collectors, because some of them were really old. 
Um, there's some that date back to like the Civil War era. Um, it was in there. So I don't know if it's because there were so many old ones or if it was just, you know, there's people out there collecting buttons now, which is, you know, I mean, there's always been button collectors, but. Okay, so there's that. So I'm going to grab a piece. You remember when we made this little stationary paper? So that stationary paper is going to go over that. And I'm actually going to... Put this over this way. Well, no, I think I'll go this way. Yeah, I'll go this way. So I'll use that just to hold that in there. I don't think I really like that one though. Let me um, is the other one better. Nope, I don't like that. We're not gonna use this. I'll go back to my original plan. I have this ripped piece here, um, so I think. my tear ruler and I only need oh uh, pray about that about a half a sheet so I'm just gonna go through and tear these I'm gonna tear this off I can use this for something else right up there I'm not worried about you know the specific size or anything because if they're uneven or whatever it doesn't matter I sort of like them when they're various sizes so I think we're actually um, let's see this one's here so we'll do this one about part way down there we go okay so now I'm gonna take my walnut stain and ink around the edges of this paper I'm sorry if the shadows are bad I hit my light earlier and I think I knocked it out of the knocked it out of place okay so there's that one and then what I'll do is I'll put the biggest one to the back, and then the medium, and then the smallest one up front. And we're just going to create a little three-page notebook. Nothing major, just... Cute little notebook. Okay. So, what I'll do is I'll take those three little pages, right like that. And I'm going to staple them in two places, once on each side, because I just like it like that. And then I'm going to get, let's see, what do I want to use? What do I want to use? Um, okay, I'm just going to use this that I had earlier. Fold it over. So now we're to trim it. Okay. Then I'm going to ink it up on all both sides. And again, it doesn't have to be super great. Just inked up. And technically, you wouldn't have to do the back side either, because but we're holding it there, so. We will. Okay. And then grab my cutter here, sorry. So I need this about three inches. Three inches by Four and a quarter. Okay, so and then I'm pretty 
she already said it's four and a quarter, so I have that rest over left over there. I'll get that over there. And again, this is just plain old orange um, hard stock. I think this is actually left over from snapping up from eons ago. Okay, so center that up. Okay, and then I'm just going to change, that's what happens when you change your mind midstream. And then... So we don't have enough foam there now, but it'll be okay. Not big, well, we have this other one right here, let's just use it. Okay. Really? It's going to be one of those days, guys. So, I'm just going to run my glue across there. And again, I'm going to center this up um, just where it has about the same amount of space on each side. So, because, I mean, it's not even itself because it was torn, obviously. But, okay. And then I'll run a bead of glue across here. And I, the reason I do the thing across the top is literally just to cover those staples because it sort of takes away to me that sort of takes away that crafty feel or naturey feel to it. When you start throwing metal into it, it becomes city city size skyscraper type thing, and not so much you know naturey. Click that. Lid on. Ink this up around the outside edges real good. And I should have done it across the bottom. I'll try to do it real quick. So I won't do it and stain up the paper. It will look. Add a little bit more to it. Then I'm going to grab a little piece of this trim. There's not a whole lot to it. And put it right there. So, and now I'm, I'm going to put right across the, where the staples are. I'm sorry if you can hear my washing machine dryer and all that. It's on the other end of the house, but we have a side loading washer and for whatever reason it sounds like a jet engine when it stops. I don't, and it's done it since we got it brand new, so I'm not... I guess that's the way they're supposed to sound. At least that's the way ours is always sound. I'm gonna trim this a little bit off. Oh, get a little crooked right there. So we've made this teeny tiny little notebook. Um, I'm doing this. I'm gonna come in and round my corners. Just because I think it looks a little, looks more, I don't know. Looks nicer. Okay, so there we go. So that's going to be our little orange notebook. It's going to tuck up there. The reason I put the lace across the top, not just to cover the staples, was if, you know, because technically you could come up here and we could tuck that right there. And you could slide your little notebook there if you want. Yeah, we could do that if you want. And that sort of leaves these sticking up through there. Try to push it up towards the top so it's most of it's up top. Mm. Actually, let's put this here. Let's try to put this here. That might look cute and it can hang over the side. Nope. Don't you like that? Unless we left that there and put that there. We could do that. Then you get double decorations. Let's do that. We'll do that. I'll leave the little notebook right here. Although I sort of don't like that covering up my... Nope, I don't, guys. I'm sorry. We can put this over here, though. Put this back in here. 
Let me put that right there. How's that? And then that sort of pulls that over there too. So it all sort of goes together. So there's that. And we have these pages with stencil on. I love this page right here. So I don't want to mess with that. And again, I don't want to mess with every single page. This has writing on it, so I don't want to do anything with that. This is a, we need to do something here. Let's do a small pocket on here. You know what, we have that orange. Let's, let's do an orange pocket with lace across the top. Let's sort of just bring orange through this since it's on the cover. That could work. And I'm just going to trim this up with my pinking shears. Hopefully straight. So it sort of has that postage look to it. Yep. Let's crank the sides up. <coughs> Excuse me. and glue this down along the edges here. There we go. Okay. And I was actually thinking going to trim it down some on this side and then we'll trim the other side no I don't want to trim the other side because it's got it's decorated so it has that jaggedy almost like ripped out page type Edges, give it some color. There we go. Nope, so that'll be two. I don't want to take any more off of that. So let's see what we have that might fit in there. Ooh, that would be neat if we got that in there because that's, no, that's not going to. Really, really, really. Oh, my, my, my. I know I made some. I have some really small things. Um, hold on, I'm moving stuff around over here. This trim can get trimmed down a little. Let me ink up the back of it. Okay. And I'm going to use this lace that I have and glue it on the back just to give it some color there so it's not all. Give it something. And trim it up. Come on. Okay. 
do have a little more we can trim off the edges, so. I'll just have to re-ink it, but that's not an issue. We can do that. And I'm just making sure, I'm doing this to the side. I'm sorry, that's probably aggravating to you guys. I'm doing this to the side, so it doesn't, all that trash doesn't balk up in the middle of my table, which is what usually happens. Okay, surely this will fit. Come on. There's no winning, is there? that in there with the little tag at the top with that it's just cute um i think right here i want to do a belly band i think that goes with that really well so i'm just gonna put a little bit of glue at each end And then we've got our stationery. Um, so tomorrow we will do our envelope. I think I want to use this one with the glue. Although, I mean, technically you wouldn't have to use an envelope. That itself looks really great in there, but we will do an envelope for that. So we'll do that tomorrow. Let's see. Let's see what else we have in here. I have the grasses. I wanted to do a little corner tuck um, with this and then we'll do lace along the edge but I wanted to do a corner tuck with this because I thought it was really cute because of you know being all cut out along the round so I'm gonna do it up the side just a tad bit there we go now let me find my lace that I wanted to use here and decide what I want to put off the edge. Because I don't want to use the same um, it's still giving us a pink tone. So, if we do that light pink, that'll go along with their pretty, really, really pretty. So, let me grab my Fabri-Tac, and that'll give us a little color. And this was just some white lace that I... Uh, dyed. I need to do some blue and green um, that'll match so I may do that tomorrow and that way you guys can see because I I dye it when I do my paper and stuff but then I have like a fast dye a fast way that I do it um, so I may do that tomorrow so you can see what I do with that but I love that pink in there that's so pretty to the side because I'll probably use that on my envelope when I do my envelope too because it'll sort of pull that together so this is sort of orangey pinky so that's a tuck so we do have this card left or this tag left I want to put something in the corner there um ooh, you know what let's let me pull out that butt my buttons and get one of those buttons out of there um just trying to find one of those orangey buttons we had not the orange will look good but i think it, i don't think it would clash with the pink so let's see if we can find something that'll go with that pink really good 
Ooh, there's a oh, I'm sorry I'm off camera doing this, but um But you guys can hear the pretty sounds they make. died when I was dying stuff I did some pink too so I know there's some pink down here somewhere okay there's pink stuff yep and I want to do a oops and I want to do a piece of the tea stain doily so just cut a little chunk of it out So, let's see what we got going here. Um, let's put this little bitty flower over here. This would be perfect. I'm going to put the button in the middle of it. Or maybe we should do a bigger flower. Yeah, because it covers up the flower. We don't want to do that unless, I don't know, we can get there. Um, okay, let's see what else we have here that we might be able to use. There's cheese popping. Ooh, you know what? This would be really cute. Let's cut off some of this. This is some really, let's try to do that. We'll do that. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. Let's see. This is going to go in here like this. I think right in here would be really good. So let's throw some glue down. Gotta start somewhere. We'll throw that glue down. That'll force you to start. And that's what I always do. If I can't, I just throw down some glue and that forces you to have to start. Okay, then I'm just gonna get my button and turn it over. I'm gonna cover it with fiber tack. Okay, then I'm gonna grab this lace that I have and I'm sort of just gonna ruffle it up all the way around and I'll just create like this little lacy flower around my button the hard part about that is not getting your fingers stuck this is easier if you use hot glue um, or you know if you put your fabric tack on let it set for a little bit and it'll start to tack up and then it won't be as difficult And you can turn it over and sort of move things around as you need to. Okay. Right here. Then um, I actually want. rip off a piece of my tea dyed paper that is lighter and I'm gonna grab my ink it up real fast just around the edges just to sort of define okay and then I'll put that uh, that right there okay now I'll grab my fiber tack and I'm going to recover the back of my button, making sure I put a lot in the middle because it's going to go out and then making sure I put some on every bit of lace around there too because that'll be, man, I don't want to cover this over in here because that sort of shows, um, you know, that characteristic holes and stuff of the doily. So I'm actually going to come down here. 
by here and just push and put some pressure and then you want to hold that for a little bit because you want to make sure that it tacks up in the center because you have all that lace on the outside edges and there's nothing in the center so you want to make sure your button adheres to your paper too um, because that's going to help hold it long term um, fabric tag does dry permanent so if you can you know make sure it adheres to the paper you know that's going to keep it and then I'm just scratching off fabric tag I got on the button um, so I always sort of hold some pressure on it till it and it doesn't take very long and then there you go Isn't that so cute okay now give me just a second and I climb over here and see nope okay hold on just a second I'm sorry my hand went right in the way I'm gonna get my ray anchors I'm gonna pull my pink out I'm cleaning my brush here. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to clean my brush. Let me put my top in my art glitter glue before I'm... It's amazing. I always forget to put that in there. Then when I tried it, I can't get it in the hole. Daggone it. Hold on. So, that over here, I'm going to clean your brush out really good, and I'm going to just put, this is pink, this is um, Stampin' Up! Reinker, and this is, uh, let's see, I'm trying to see, Blushing Bride is what it's called, and I just need a drop. It is not going to take that much. Okay. And I'm just going to dip the tip of my brush in it. Just the straight thick part. I'm not going to like wipe it all over the brush. Just dip it in there. Okay. Then I'm going to take my finger. So it's not dry all the way. And then just barely light, very lightly. And if you, I don't know if you can hear it, I'm just really lightly flicking it. If you get to an area, sort of hold your tag back if you need to. And if you need to get another drop, you can. more of it than then you can take it and sort of tap it out now I'm on a glass mat um, so you know you can use a styrofoam plate or something like that and I'm just sort of very lightly just sort of brushing it across making sure I don't get anywhere else then I mean if you want to add color you know you can you can do that and then just grab a sponge and sort of slide it across or you can um, let's see if I can get you know get water and it doesn't take a lot um, let me get my rag over here because then you just get a little bit of water I 
like that. You come back through. And you just sort of let it go. It's going to grab where we inked around the outside edges. Um, and then I just wipe that up like that. It's going to grab that distress ink. And that's going to create that faded white look around the outside edges. Let me. And that was just the water bottle cap um, is all that was. And that's reinker. Now you can do that with your distress reinkers too if you have them in like, um, yeah, oh. Uh, and then go back through and hit it. Now I'm going to pull out my gun really fast. If I can find it now. Buried. And it doesn't take very long to dry that once it's on there. So we've got that pink, we've got that distressed edge because you've got that distressed color. Now we can go back through. Now that we've dried it and darken that edge up really, really good. So that plain little tag we had, and we've already inked the back of it, that plain little tag we had now has this cute little, and you can see where, hopefully, you can see the pink on there where I inked it with the brush. So if you, you know, you can buy the Distress Ray Inkers. Um, they're not very expensive. You're using a drop at a time. It's going to last a long time. Um, so, you know, if you want a fast dye without... I'll show you tomorrow exactly how I fast I make I do it faster than the brush um, but if you just want to do it once you get on there or if you get it on there and realize you know your card needs a pop of color or something you can brush it on there um, like that and then just hit it with the dryer and then around the edge where because we'd already inked it so that created that you gotta love that you know Tim Holtz distress you know that white powdery distress look where it looks like it's you know been molded I'm not molded <laughs> But where it's been wet and set in the basement for a long time or whatever. And then it does that nice wet edge on the end. You, and you can see the pink undertone to it. So it makes it really nice. And that was just the leftover after I did my ribbon. Then I just did that around the corner. So I made a nice aged journaling card. And I mean, that looks really good with that. And so that's going to slide right in there. One other thing I'm going to do is because we have a brown button, I'm going to grab my brown Sharpie and I'm just going to go right around this pink and it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to create a little dark square around that frame and I when I made the digital kit, I was obviously going to frame that in because I wanted it to pop. But then I thought, well, what happens if, you know, you could use that with all kinds of different colors. So there you go. And it says a friend might well be reckoned the masterpiece of nature, Ralph Waldo Emerson. So, and you see how that pink is just where that dark went around the edge. It just blends really really good so we're going to leave that for today 
Um, again, you know, we're halfway through the first signature, so, you know, going every page. So, we do have some stenciling stuff like that, but I don't want to over balk it because we have, you know, the three signatures. So, there we go. And we've got pink. That pink hangs out just past that, which makes it really nice. Yeah, so, we did this whole front page. It decorated the page. Um, did the three tucks. We did the tab. Did the little mini notebook, the postcard altered paper clip. Um, did the belly band. Did this little insert. We still have to decorate that. Did our tag and our tuck and our lace on the edge. So, yeah, we're moving right along. So, I hope you enjoyed. Um, and we will be back tomorrow again with another video. Have a great evening. Um, again, you know, if you try any of these tricks or like them or whatever, let me know what you think um, in the comments below, uh, and we will see you next time. I do know that we are almost, okay, we were at 800, and then we went to 799, and then, so we've been bouncing back and forth, but we are at 800. I will be doing a an 800 subscriber giveaway. Um, it is, it's going to be awesome. It is on its way here, so as soon as it gets here, um, okay, as part of it gets here. Um, then I will do a video for that. So, you know, stay tuned. We will be doing an 800 subscriber giveaway really, really soon. I would say probably, you know, within the next several days um, to the beginning of next week, depending on, you know, when the item gets here. That's what I'm waiting. Well, I've got several items coming when they get here. So um, have a great day and we'll see you again next time. Bye.